Hi, welcome back. Example 24 is what we'll go over next, okay? So it's in the textbook, okay? The question is presented for you. The graph is drawn out as well, okay? And I mentioned the graph work of sec x earlier, didn't I, when I was introducing this? So what we need to do is find an estimate for this area here. Now, it kind of helps us. Most examination questions do this, to be honest. Most exam questions give us a table to fill out and complete, and that pretty much helps us with the question. So they're generally easy questions, okay? But what if they haven't got the table? I'm going to talk you through what to do, okay? Um, can you see that I have these strips this has been divided up into in order to have this table? Okay, it's been divided into four strips, hasn't it? Okay, so I'm just write that here. Another way a question could be asked is to find out the area is by dividing the shape up into four strips. When I say the shape, I mean the area, okay? Now, how would you do that, okay? How would you do that? Well, normally, well, actually, no, always, it tells you between where and where it wants you to find the area. Okay? So you start up with zero, and the last one you know is going to be pi over three. If it says divide up to four strips, it's quite simple. What I suggest you do is just split it up like this to begin with. So that means one, two strips. Yeah? And then there again, that means one, two, three, four strips. If you had to divide it into eight strips, obviously, okay, so that's the way I generally divide it up. Okay? Now I'm going to show you what the trapezia look like, and that's going to help you with the answer of the last question. Maybe we just do that now, okay? Maybe we just answer that last question now so that we are aware of what's going on. Okay? Part C, explain with a reason whether your estimate that we're going to get will be an underestimate or an overestimate. Okay? Can you see it's going to be an overestimate, okay? Because look, the trapezium, when you draw it, Okay, correctly, is going above the actual curve, isn't it? Okay, so what you do is in your answer you say each of the trapezia, you know what trapeziums if you want, okay, actually are above the curve. Okay, um, some exam mark schemes would say quite either because it's convex or concave, which is a bit silly really, okay, because you've got to get the right one, isn't it? Okay, um, here they just mention that um, uh, the graph is convex, okay, but it's they correctly say because the two endpoints meet above the curve. It's probably a good idea to actually write that in. Okay. So the answer we're going to get is going to be an overestimate. I just wanted to put that in there first. Okay. Um, the hardest bit is working out what H is. You might think that's easy. No, because the biggest mistake that is made generally is when students don't have the correct value of H. Okay. Well, the value of H is that, isn't it? Okay. What are each of these values? Okay. Well, that's pi over 3. Yeah? If you half pi over 3, what do you get? You get this value, didn't you? That's pi over 6, isn't it? Okay. If you half that again, what do you get? You get pi over 12. Stop there, because this bit here, that's what h is. Okay. So h is pi over 12. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Okay. So anyway, so in terms of the x coordinates, you get x equals 0, the next one is pi over 12. And you can see the next one will be pi over 6. And I'm just got to work out this one here is, okay? If you're not too sure about how to do this mentally, just think about this, okay? These have got to be evenly spaced. So pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 4 pi over 12. Yeah? So pi over 12, 2 pi over 12 is that, 3 pi over 12 gives you pi over 4. There we go. And that's why you got that one there, okay? Now that was given to us in the example, but it's not always the case. Sometimes you've got to work out these yourself, and I've just given you a method for that, okay? From the table, it's easy to work out h, okay? Just c, look, between there and there, pi over 12. It's as easy as that, okay? Now, there is this rather interesting looking formula. Can you see that? What I'm pointing to? Yeah. It says where h equals b minus a over n. Please, please, don't try and memorise the formula and work at the value of h that way, because that is where most mistakes come from. Okay, remember I said h is the hardest bit? It's not really, is it? Okay. Um, but some students try and use that to work at the value of h and just get it wrong. Okay, please don't do that. Just look at the table. It's simple. 
should be simple, okay? Right, you're gonna work out each of these are, okay? I didn't talk about that much in my last video. It's a question you could have legitimately asked, okay? But uh, I knew it was gonna be covered in this example, okay? How do you work out the y coordinates? You just use the formula for the curve, y equals sec x, okay? So y equals sec zero. Remember, of course, sec x means one over cos x, then I can just squeeze that in there. It's the reciprocal of cos x, okay? And of course, cos x is one, so one over one is one, okay, there. Um, pi over 12, mm, that's not an easy one, is it really? So let's just check this. Uh, got to make sure it's in radians. It wasn't in radians because, in my defense, I was doing a question last time that involved degrees, okay? So there we go. Um, so let's just do cos pi over 12, cos pi over 12 equals, all right, let's do reciprocal that to the power of negative one equals, Root 6 subtract root 2. And you might be thinking, oh, what's he doing? Shouldn't he be writing that to how many? What does it say in the question? Um, it says two decimal places. No. It says three decimal places. I can do both. I can do both. So 1.035. Okay. So that's it. Right, it's gone now, isn't it? I've just pressed that button. It's gone. But knowing that it's root two subtract, sorry, root six subtract root two, it's going to help me. Okay. Now we have to substitute these into the formula, aren't I? Okay. All right, pi over six. Cos pi over six, that's um, root three over two, isn't it? Yeah, so it's two over root three. Let's just work out that, you see. Two divided by square root three equals, okay, two root three over three, thank you. Right. One point, one, five, Five, okay, yeah, just check it's yeah, it's three decimal places, isn't it? Yeah, one point one five five, okay. Um, pi over four, cos pi over four is one over root two, so it's simple that, it's just root two, okay. One point four one four, yeah, I've got root two memorized, one point four one four two something. Um, and pi over three, that's cos pi over three is a half, the simple of a half is two, okay. By the way, the three decimal places bit, where appropriate, okay? You would not write 2.000 or 1.000, okay. Now, let's use the formula. So, area, always remember the approximation symbol. Don't put area equals, please. This is an approximation. And then, do you remember the formula? Okay, good. So, it's a half of h. So, a half of um, pi over 12. Please make it clear to the examiner you know what h is. That's it's a B mark, okay? Basically, like you get a mark for it, irrespective of what other work you've shown, okay? Um, so half of pi over 12, and then in brackets, y is zero. Uh, so it's be fiddly to write it in, isn't it? So root six subtract root two plus two lots of two over root three plus. Uh, sorry, sorry, messed it up. I was too keen to get going on that. Never mind. That goes first. Two root six subtract root two plus two root three plus root two. Close off the bracket and then plus two. Yeah? Yeah. Then you can write equals, you see. You can just write down the final answer if you want. Okay, just write down the final answer if you want. Okay. Um, do you mind, rather than have just a minute's worth of me punching the calculator, um, I'm just going to write down, uh, see, they've used decimals, you see, just, oh gosh. Um, so I'm going to have to check that, because I'm not convinced. So yeah, I'm going to do the calculator thing, okay. So, yeah. Um, maybe I'll put some music on in the background while I'm doing it. Okay, let's just let's try it. Sorry, it's because 
the music was so good, I just wanted to listen to it a bit more. Okay, right. Let's write down what answer I got. So I got 1.33627. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Honey, honey, kitten. No, I oh, went. Sorry. I got a bit turned uh, carried away, didn't I? So what have they got? 1.336. Who? 224075. That's not right, is it? Okay. Um, as approximations go, that's even more inaccurate, okay? So, yeah, I'm going to read out what you should have. 1.336273891. And that's where my calculator stops, okay? So 1.33627. And so they've just, yeah, because see what they've done? They've, they've used these rounded figures, you see. We've talked about this a lot in class, today. not I've used those rounded figures, and that's not quite right, is it, okay? So that's, um, that's a bit cheeky of them. They would get away with it in the exam, okay, because the question says give your answer to two decimal places. And notice how my answer to two decimal places is 1.34 as well. Okay, so it's kind of lucky in a way that they get, get away with it, okay. Um, but really, I'd expect to see this, okay. And that's why I'd advocate always you trying to use the exact values if possible. In the actual table, okay. I hope that was useful information for you. I hope that was useful for you, okay. All right, there you go. Um, and that's it. There's only example 24, okay, but there's lots to talk about, of course. Um, and I could put another video up, okay. Um, am I going to tell you what it is? No, because otherwise I might say I'm going to do a video about this, and you might think, oh, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to make you find out, okay. All right, coming right up.